Hey there. Today we will be discussing about the Blazor. It's a new experimental framework uh, from ASP.NET team. Let me uh, tell you. Uh, let me emphasize that particular word. It's a new experimental framework. You should not jump in directly, and you can you should not uh, build your production apps. Blazor is a framework uh, by which you can run your C# uh, code in browser. This is possible due to this new specification from W3WC that is called WebAssembly. So in WebAssembly, you can uh, run your C, C++ or Rust code directly in the browser. There are a couple of ways you can do it. WebAssembly is a new standard in W3C where uh, we can run our C, C++ or Rust codes in browser in near native suite. So it's not there to replace the JavaScript. It is there to work alongside with JavaScript to make the web more powerful. It uh, web simply has its own use cases. If you go to the Google and try to search, you will find a lot of articles, and you, you, you will try to uh, you will understand what is the use cases of Blazor. So if you are really um, if you are really interested about WebAssembly, then you can go to these links. So if you see here webassembly.org this is the one link where you can find all those details about webassembly how to build it how to run that application and there is another link it is also developer.mozilla.org here also you will find detailed description about all webassembly all the apis whatever are there uh, and if if there is another link also this one em e e e scripty and tutorial here you'll find all those details tutorial how to install em script and, and how to um, compile your c++ application so it's not about uh, web assembly so we'll directly go and we'll discuss about blazor there are a couple of prerequisites or pre, um, pre subtypes you need to um, run a blazor application right now so currently blazor depends on uh, .NET Core 2.1 preview one SDK and Visual Studio 2017 uh, preview and ASP.NET Core uh, Blazor language service extension. So if you have installed uh, the newest version and uh, that means uh, the 15.7.3 preview, I guess you will get everything pre-installed and Blazor works fine there. The first, uh, question, the obvious question here will be, so WebAssembly supports only C, C, C++ and Rust code. How is the C uh, able to run in the particular browser? So um, when uh, this when uh, Blazor started and it's as a hackathon project, they came up with two approaches. One, they have to compile all the C C sub DLLs to uh, C plus plus and push it to the um, the client. That is one approach. Another approach is to convert the whole runtime to WebAssembly and dynamically load, load all those DLLs, CSAP DLLs, whatever and needed and uh, it will run in the client. So uh, Blazor team went with the second one that is uh, loading the particular um, uh, converting the runtime uh, to WebAssembly format and load all those DSL, DLL, uh, DLL. During hackathon they have used uh, .NET anywhere but currently they are using uh, this particular project uh, Blazor is using Mano in browser which is a uh, framework from mono um, where uh, they have converted the whole runtime to WebAssembly, and you can run up um, uh, on your c sharp application like uh, the way blazor is built so once you have uh, all your software ready you can directly go to here if if you see here it's written visual studio 2017 preview so you have to go here just click it so it will uh, if you see preview is already written here it's there so you can understand it's a preview version if you see uh, the version of that particular uh, visual studio i am using it is a 15.17 preview 3.0 now you can uh, create any application the way we used to create from here or from here so let us create it from here i will select this one then it's a ASP.NET Core application, so I will select ASP.NET Core Web application with name and location as whatever is predefined. Then I will click OK. So once you click OK, you can create Blazor application in two, uh, two templates now. This one is uh, currently client only, and this one is uh, contains both client and server. 
so blazor in the client and asp.net core in the server it's a asp.net core hosted so the benefit you will be getting here is end to end is .NET. that means the blazor you can write in sap in the server code uh, asp.net you can write the same thing so now let us uh, for timing you will select this one because it contains a uh, more functionality that's this one and this particular uh, template contains this uh, functionality also so let us go and create this so it's creating okay now it's created yeah so this uh, particular project is created and uh, if you see this google is or if you see here it's saying uh, restore completed that means trying to restore all those packages whatever is needed to run this particular application so everything is uh, packages are uh, restored now this particular template comes with three projects one is a uh, set another is server and this one is the client client is the actual uh, our blazor application which runs in the browser server it it is used used to host this particular blazor application and serve some particular data you can say it as a server side uh, asp.net where you can write server side and this is the client side application and shared say it's a um, it's a api or it's a library which is used to share some uh, functionality between this client and server so if you have any um, functionality you want to share between this client and server in that case you can put all those logic in the shared shared assembly so let us jump to the server first if you open a server in the startup dot uh, startup dot cs here you will find that there is a new line called add response compression so they have uh, they, they, they have specified two mim mime types and in the configure section you will find that um, we are using app dot use blazor so this this is basically host this uh, blazor application in asp.net core and there you have to pass your uh, program.cs of the particular client uh, blazor application now let us jump to uh, the our blazor application which is the client once you open uh, program.cs you will find in the first line that is browser service provider so already if you see it's written that add any custom services here suppose you want to use some customer services then uh, you can use uh, let me put it this way blazor is uh, completely based on the uh, dependency injection so it's building so if you want any uh, new uh, you want to use any custom services and you want to take the advantage of uh, dependency injection you can put it uh, put those logic here after that uh, if you see it's a we are creating a new object uh, browser render and service provider and we are adding a, a component which takes it's a generic component which takes a um, takes a type and uh, in the function we are passing a string as a parameter and let me open that particular file here it's a app.cstml this is the one particular uh, where you have given it as a component name this is the component name which is similar to this name of the particular file this app.cstml and we are passing the string here so if you open web root under index.html this particular uh, app it says to replace the uh, blazor app on that particular location of index.html that's similar to here so during runtime it will replace this particular tag with our blazor application so blazor application is going to run in this place if you see good let us go to app.component here uh, if you see it's uh, written that router then app assembly type of program dot assemblies basically this is here to configure our to kick the um, kick in the configuration of router uh, here uh, we are initializing all those routers whatever we need I'll, I, I have not already mentioned you uh, blazor supports client side routing also so this this is here current uh, timing in the in the later i guess in the later releases they are going to move these things to program dot cs they have already mentioned it here okay uh, for timing it is here so you have to um, uh, to write it here otherwise everything will fail now let us run our application c so generally it uh, takes a little bit of time maybe in the future they are going to optimize it but uh, for it, it it will take a uh, timing uh, because you have to rebuild the whole 
clean the solution and it has to rebuild everything from the scratch so my application is uh, default hold is 5570 it is running so this is the blazer um, particular application came in now let us go to the counter okay let us open the cam uh, i have already opened the counter dot html this is the one so if you see this is similar to this whatever is running in the browser it's saying current uh, count number is five and uh, this is the code which displays that particular value Blazor is based on the uh, razor syntax so to writing or accessing any csap functionality you have to write uh, that particular function will trap the red here uh, current counter is a um, a problem it's a basically a property if you see everything is put inside the functions um, section and increment counter is a csa function which in simply increase this particular counter by one to call this particular uh, csa uh, this particular function if you see here the button it is similar to this button here click me and there you can see the same and uh, for for any click event uh, blazor is providing a function called uh, on click so to access that particular function you have to put the at the rate on click then it's a it takes a action uh, delegate uh, so you have to put it, uh, put this function name here now it it will work as expected and if you click it will try to increase the particular counter value in the top if you see there is a uh, special line called at the rate phase then this particular string which says has or slash uh, forward slash counter it's basically uh, we are uh, saying that it's uh, this is the route uh, router for, uh, for that particular component or for that particular page so if it is not there it's fine but you can route to that particular component but you can use it as a child component of other components so now let us go to a little bit advanced which is uh, example which is provided by them itself by the asp.net team if you click phase data it will uh, says that it's a weather forecast report whether you will say the date and temperature and temperature in Fahrenheit and summary of that now let us jump to that code and try to see how this code is so uh, as I already told you phase data is here if you go to the uh, in the top it's written that uh, web application said th this is the particular uh, it's referring to this particular class which is used and this is the uh, work as a dtu or data transport object which is going to send the data from the server asp.net core application to our client we'll see it uh, see it now so here this let us jump to this section so here first we are declaring an array of forecast which is a, is a uh, which is a list which is holds all those uh, forecast details whatever we can see it here these these details and uh, blazor component has a couple of uh, lifetime events so you can hook it and you can uh, write your own code uh, there so one of them is on init async so which is a gate executor on this particular component is initialized so here we are using a gate json async and we are getting the data from sample data weather webcast this particular endpoint is present in the server here so if you open to the go to the controller and open this particular file you can see it in the summaries they have written all those summaries detail and here they are creating this particular uh, i enable of weather forecast and sending it to the client that means to our face data here we are uh, loading those all those data whatever we get it from here to the particular array and this is the function uh, we are uh, going to one by one when trying to construct a, a tier and we are displaying this uh, values here if you go to top you'll find another uh, new line called at the rate inject http client http i have already mentioned that dependency injection is built in the uh, framework itself in the pleasure so to access the or inject that particular class just you have to write at the rate then the class name and the variable where you are in uh, trying to inject in and where which you can use in later version so this is the second part so uh, that's it for this video uh, let me iterate through the same thing a couple of things again this is an experimental framework so you can you should not go and um, build your production application on this if you want to play around uh, with particular 
this particular um, examples then you can go ahead and download this preview version and try to play it around suppose you want to uh, contribute some something to their, their uh, repo then it's it's there in the github espinot blazer you can go go there and everything is written what is the feature they are going to be provided in the future and how you have to build run your unit test or you have to build build this particular source so if you are really interested on building this source code and contribute to their repo just go here and try to do that so for this video that's it in the future video i am going to explain more concept whatever they is currently present in the written pleasure just like binding how to bind the data how you can execute or how you can execute call any javascript function which is present in the client with sisa many more concepts so stay tuned thanks for watching bye bye